Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me now. Welcome to another edition of the International Relations Capsule for the Shankar AAS Academy. Uh, we, have, we shall be discussing the crisis in Bangladesh. It's a little bit old, but uh, last couple of weeks I was away and I could not participate in these capsules. So uh, you know the details definitely as to what has happened. Um, but we will look at the situation as of today. Of course, I don't need to remind you about the story of Bangladesh, how it uh, was in fact created by India after a war with Pakistan, because Pakistan refused to recognize the victory of uh, Sheikh Majibur Rahman for both parts of Pakistan. And he should have actually been sworn in as uh, Pakistan Prime Minister. And Yahya uh, Khan decided not to allow that. And therefore, the revolt started. And at one stage, India sent in its troops to support the liberation struggle. And um, we liberated Bangladesh. And the Pakistan army surrendered to the Indian army. And very soon, a new government is established. Bangladesh was recognized by India and later by several countries. And uh, Bangladesh has been having, uh, the from 1971 to 75, they had a very peaceful uh, development. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was still in power. Uh, but in 75, a very serious uh, thing happened that uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and his entire family um, were assassinated in uh, Dhaka. And that was a big change because uh, it was Sheikh Mujibur Rahman who had left, led the arm, led the liberation struggle. He was the father of the nation. And this was a big shock. And at that time, the world realized uh, Bangladesh is not going to be as peaceful and prosperous as it was expected. And the um, situation continued. Uh, Sheikh Hasina, who happened to be in London at that time, was not killed. That is his uh, daughter. All others and, and her sister, Asina and her sister were in London and uh, they came back. And uh, elections were held and uh, uh, the Awami League came to power. And there have been several elections since then. And uh, there were two major leaders. One was As Sheikh Asina, that is Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's daughter, and um, Zia, Khalida Zia. Um, who was uh, the leader of the Jamaat Islami Party, or Bangladesh Nationalist Party, it was called. So, uh, in, India had a very good relations in spite of all that happened. And, but at the same time, there was continuously some kind of animus against India and Hindus, because there are quite a few people in Bangladesh who continue to be with Pakistan, wanted to be continued to with Pakistan. And Pakistan encouraged various kinds of uh, rebellions in uh, Bangladesh. And um, China also suspected to have helped them and so on. But uh, finally, for the last 15 years, uh, Sheikh Hasina was in power. And uh, at that time, India-Bangladesh relations improved. And the economic situation in Bangladesh also improved as a result of cooperation with India. India made the huge investments in Bangladesh. And uh, the, the last 15 years, we had very good relationships and India did whatever it could to help Bangladesh. And at one time, in fact, Bangladesh had become, you said, GDP had could become higher than that of India. And people started asking, what is India doing? Bangladesh is doing so well. So uh, the economic situation was good. The political situation was stable. Indo-Bangladesh uh, relations were fine, and we did what we can to help Bangladesh in this whole process. And whatever disputes there were about water, etc., were resolved. So, in fact, I was in uh, Bangladesh in 2019. And uh, when I came back, I wrote that if, as long as Sheikh, Sheikh Hasina is in power, there will be no problem in India. Bangladesh relations and Bangladesh will also prosper. And I spoke to her and found how friendly she was 
towards India, and she believed that uh, good relations between India and Bangladesh was the answer uh, for progress and uh, prosperity. Uh, but of course, the extremists were creating trouble once in a while. But uh, that she dealt with the any kind of opposition very forcefully. And uh, then rumors started uh, going around that she had become dictatorial. She had put her enemies in jail. And uh, therefore, there was some kind of, a, uh, what shall we say, uprising here and there. And uh, news spread that uh, she was, Sheikh Hasina was oppressing and the people opposition. And this was there, but there was no serious threat to his government. And then July this year, all of you know that there were student protests. The student protests started rather meekly uh, because the demand was that uh, the quotas reserved in educational institutions for those who were engaged in the freedom struggle. It was something which was established during Mujibur Rahman's time. And uh, those who lost their lives in uh, the liberation struggle, their children were given some quotas in the ed education institutions. And the first protest was against that. And Sheikh, Sheikh Hasina very quickly accepted. And she removed the quotas herself. But then it was the High Court of uh, Dhaka came back and said that quota should be re-established. And that was also done, but uh, in spite of that, Sheikh Hasina decided to go to the Supreme Court and uh, remove it again. So this was not a major issue at all. Nobody thought that that was going to be a big issue. But obviously this was instigated by other people, uh, particularly the Muslim uh, fundamentalists. And uh, very quickly, in four or five days, it uh, flared up so much, people, about 300 people were killed, and there was unrest in the country. And naturally, army uh, stepped in. Of course, unlike in Pakistan, army did not take over. Uh, but the chief of uh, army staff uh, went to Sheikh Hasina's house and suggested that she should leave, resign and leave, otherwise her life would be in danger. So before the world realized what had happened, Sheikh Hasina left Dhaka and arrived in India, and now she lives in Delhi. So what the uh, army did was not to take over the power itself, uh, but appointed a, an interim government, they call them advisors, with the world famous Nobel Prize uh, winner uh, to head the interim, interim government. And he was, uh, of course, uh, arrested by uh, Sheikh Hasina for some corruption charges. Because, you know, she, he used to run these Grameen banks. And he was known as the, the banker of the poor. And uh, anyway, the, but they had general acceptance. So the army invited him to head the interim, interim government. And that generally satisfied the international community because he was very well known and he was a Nobel laureate. And um, But uh, the rebellion continued. There was law and order situation, people were dying. And it was suddenly noticed that this was specifically, um, you know, to attack Indians and Hindus particularly. So it turned into an anti-India, anti-Hindu movement. And our concern was that uh, Hindus were being killed and uh, temples were being desecrated and so on. Uh, but fortunately, it did not la last very long. And uh, the rebellion uh, was subdued because uh, the, uh, the government uh, was uh, appointed advisors, the government was formed. And uh, the, the chief advisor, of course, uh, requested for calm and uh, generally to uh, go back to students, to go back to the universities, and a relative calm set in. Uh, but the issue was what to do with uh, Sheikh Hasina. She was in India. There was talk of her going to some other countries, 
But she's still in India, obviously, because she couldn't make any arrangement for an asylum or anything. So she continues with us. And that, of course, is a, is a problem because they have charged several charges against her, many of the murder charges. And um, it is quite possible that uh, the Bangladesh government will uh, demand uh, her uh, repatriation to Dhaka. That would be an issue because we would not like to do that. We would not like her to be jailed or killed in Bangladesh. And that issue remains. Uh, but on the whole, the situation has uh, calmed down. Uh, but many statements uh, made by the chief advisor have been accusing Sheikh Hasina, uh, not only for being a dictator, but also for having destroyed the many institutions in uh, uh, all the major institutions in, uh, in Bangladesh. And so the situation continues to be tense. There are problems against India. And so we are also keeping an eye on the situation there. Uh, but our idea is to allow the, uh, the temporary government, the interim government to work out the peace and uh, and move towards elections. Uh, but uh, it is quite, uh, they have made it very clear that elections cannot be held very soon. And uh, they you know, uh, set free the leader, the Khalid Zia, Khalid Zia, and um, also let off some of the extremists. A couple of even terrorists who were in jail were let off. So the interim administration is being polite to the, um, the the extremist sentiments and uh, trying to bring about some kind of uh, order. And the army, of course, is standing by. They are not intervening. But that process of uh, revolution has started. But it looks very clear that Sheikh Hasina will not be able to go back because of all these charges against her. And uh, India's own relationship will be rather muted because uh, of the anti-Hindu sentiments. The Prime Minister has spoken to the, uh, the interim administrator and uh, stressed the importance of uh, religious minorities. And uh, generally, a poor country has become poorer because of all this situation. And the economic crisis is looming large. Uh, the, the question is, who started it and what was the reason for this? agitation. And one story is that this was a popular uprising by the people on account of Sheikh Hasina's uh, dictatorial ways. And uh, she was uh, killing op opponents and putting them in jail. And therefore, she lost touch with the people. And therefore, it was a natural popular uprising. And people started even making comparisons, saying that India also, if such a thing happens, this will be repeated in India. Some people who are against the BJP government started saying that also. So anyway, uh, their general hope is that the uh, situation will improve and uh, new elections will be held uh, sooner or later. Uh, then there is the other theory that this was actually instigated by people from outside Bangladesh. Uh, Pakistan is an obvious... Uh, suspect in this, and uh, China, and surprisingly, even the United States. Because Sheikh Hasina said that the United States probably had a hand in it. And she implied that uh, the United States had asked for some facilities in the Bay of Bengal to set up a security system there, apparently against China. And, uh, and an island was demanded by the United States. But these are difficult to believe that the United States would seek a regime change in Bangladesh uh, simply because they wanted to establish a military base in uh, the Bay of Bengal. They could do it in several ways. So, But this is also a story spreading and in some way or the other this has been uh, suspected. And the United States expressed some satisfaction that there is change in Bangladesh. So there is that suspicion also. So it's a very complicated matter, and time only will tell what exactly happened in Bangladesh and uh, how it can be resolved. Uh, but the general feeling is that things will not be solved very easily, though because though it is uh, con con the constitution says 
called a secular country. Islam has an important position as a religion in the, in the state. And uh, therefore, their secularism is not very intact. And uh, unless secularism is established, it will be difficult for the large Indian community and the Hindus to continue there. There could be a flow of refugees into India as it happened before 1971. A million people came to India and then we had to fight the war to send the uh, refugees back to Bangladesh. That was the reason why we intervened in the, in the conflict. So well, the general feeling is that our neighborhood is in turmoil. We know what's happening in uh, um, Maldives. People say that there are a coup in progress. We don't know what's happening there. Afghanistan, of course, is in turmoil. And um, uh, Pakistan has become bankrupt and not able to hold forward. Sri Lanka is heading for an election, but at the same time, they are not very stable. They are surviving on the IMF loan. So on the whole, Sri Lanka, China's designs are, seem to be working because through the Belt and Road Initiative, China is trying to dominate all these countries. And uh, Sri Lanka is one, Pakistan, of course, is another. So in Bangladesh, they were not very active, but uh, they had some, uh, you know, some dislike of Sheikh Hasina. She paid a visit to uh, China just a few weeks before the rebellion. And uh, she could not meet the president of China. And she, in fact, had shot her visit and came back. So China is not doing very well in Bangladesh. But China is doing well in other states, and they must be happy about uh, what has happened. And so the issue is very, very, very serious. There is also some theory that uh, this is a U.S. way of countering China, because they want to influence Bangladesh through uh, the Bay of Bengal and try and get a foothold there. They can counter China. So whether China and the U.S. are working together or they are working at cross purposes, we do not know. So these are the uh, details, but observers uh, differ as to how it happened and what would happen in the future. But certainly we are in for some problems with Bangladesh because whoever comes to power at the elections, then there will be anti-Indian sentiments will grow and uh, there will be problems that might arise uh, sooner or later. So our whole neighborhood is in turmoil, and this is not a good sign for us. And uh, the Prime Minister Modi has just started his third term, and uh, he, of course, invited all the neighbors as he did on the first occasion. And many of them came, and so the neighborhood policy continues. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the best friend we had in our neighborhood, and the most peaceful, in the most prosperous friend we had in our neighbor Bangladesh is in trouble. So it looks so that we have, we will have uh, uncertainties and uh, instability in our region. And this does not look good for us. So we all have to work in order to bring back stability and prosperity to Bangladesh. So this is a short account of what has happened since July. And uh, we need to watch the situation and see what is in store for us. Thank you very much. Would you have any questions relating to the situation? Uh, can this current household uh, be seen as a... Yes, here is this question on the chat box. This current situation be seen as a continuum of politics in the last two decades. The charge that Sheikh Hasina is stifling opposition seems to be short-sighted. Yes, she was managing the country with great difficulty. And uh, she had succeeded in it. Uh, but naturally, she had to use a firm hand in order to uh, stop activities of the anti-national uh, elements. So this is uh, negative, as I said. You are only confirming that. So then the, there is a question, will there be uh, similar uh, the tensions around the Siliguri corridor? Well, that's an anxiety that we have. As you know, that's a very narrow area in Siliguri. 
and if that is cut off, we'll be cut off not only from Bangladesh, but also from the entire Northeast. So that's a very, very serious uh, possibility. But I'm sure I've been in that region and uh, our army is very well settled there. And uh, we are very prepared for this. There was a risk and there at that time when there was a problem on the between China and uh, Myanmar. But that was at least resolved temporarily. So there is no real threat to Siliguri at this moment. What will happen to our Indian investments in Bangladesh? Well, this is to be seen because many of them, many people have left and uh, this will have to be picked up again. Of course, if this, any new government in Bangladesh will also want Indian investments to continue. And therefore, we can hope that normalcy will return and our companies will be able to function there. Another question, the, how it is going to affect India. Yes, so India government means an unfriendly anti-Indian, anti-Hindu government uh, will naturally affect our relationship. And China might want to step in, the US might want to step in. All this cannot be, uh, but Bangladesh cannot have a normal situation unless it is friendly with India because they are depend on us for water, for electricity, source, other sources, many, many things. So what can be expected for the future of Bangladesh in the hands of the current interim government? But it is an interim government. So far they have been reasonable, but uh, the statements by the leader of the government as well as others are not very helpful for the future. Because if they have to survive and continue as an interim government, they have to be show sympathy to the rebels and the anti-Indian forces. So um, he cannot, uh, Muhammad Yunus cannot really appear to be uh, friendly or uh, wanting to establish good relations with India. He has good relations with India. He has been to India several times. And um, so he personally is not against India. But he will, that as a interim government, he will be first of all answer to the answer to the army, and also he has to maintain a kind of anti-Indian approach in order to get uh, popularity. Well, there is another question: How do we diversify our political engagement from this point? Is it possible to have greater people-to-people -people ties and all sections of the society instead of putting all eggs in one basket, as argued by some observers? So when you have a friendly government, what do you do? You may try to make it more friendly. That's very natural. So it was not a question of all excess, one basket, but we had only one basket because Khalil Dazia was very hostile and uh, any return to power would have cost us more difficulties and therefore we depended on Hasina. This is very true. Uh, but then when you depend on one person who falls out of favor, then naturally we will have its uh, impact on us. Any important lessons India may learn from this episode? Well, we can, there must be several ways in which uh, we could have done it differently perhaps, but we don't know. I don't know enough about the uh, powers of play in Bangladesh. Uh, but uh, I do not think that we made any mistake. What did it to help Bangladesh, help the government, help the stability there? And that was our interest. But I suppose we have to start from the beginning and then we may discover new ideas and new lessons to practice. Then what can be expected for the future of Bangladesh in the hands of the current interim government? We already answered that. Did St. Martin Island and the US play a role in the escalation of the situation? Well, this is she had said uh, here and there that U.S. was asking for some concessions in the Bay of Bengal. But whether they asked for a particular island, we do not know. Uh, this seems to have figured in a speech allegedly written by Sheikh Hasina before she left, but it was never delivered. And her son has said later that she never wrote such a speech about Martin Island. So it is still a very confusing picture. But it is true that the Americans were interested in establishing a presence in the Bangladesh 
in the uh, Bay of Bengal. And that may have some element in it, but I don't think that was the principal reason. Another question, how we comment on the bilateral groups in which we have Bangladesh as a member? No, you mean multilateral groups. Well, SARC is there, SARC is not functioning, and uh, there are other groups, but all that will be later. Immediate situation is that they have to establish a government, hold elections, and then only these issues will come up. And although we see that today's Bangladesh is yesterday's India, which helped the state to form in 1971, and today people of Bangladesh are against Hindus, what is the lesson we had to learn from this and how far we can stay calm over this issue? Well, we are staying calm. We have not, not provoked them in any manner. Uh, but the problem is that the liberation of Bangladesh was not to the liking of a large number of Muslim population in Bangladesh. And uh, some of them may want to join, rejoin Pakistan. And that will be a big disaster from our perspective because this is something which we had invested a lot in terms of politics and economics and military and everything else. And to reverse that would be disastrous for us. So let us hope that uh, things will get better when uh, peace is established and we can go back to the old relationship between Bangladesh and India. Anything else? Okay, I take it that uh, there are no further questions. Maybe we can deal with this issue in another in the capsule later when things uh, get better. So thank you very much. Bye-bye for time. Thank you.